We created this course with a singular purpose in mind. We wanted to equip UT students with the right skills to flourish in what you could call the automation revolution. And we understand that if you want to flourish, you want to thrive in this new economy, you've got to do one thing well, and that is to work well with intelligent machines. We've always had that sentiment that we need a course, like an aerial robotics course, to educate the students how to model mathematically, physically, how a drone works, how it flies, how can it maintain itself in the air. We wanted to teach the students how to code, how to uh, understand the theoretical models of, uh, of drones and their interaction with the atmosphere, and then how to control them. And finally, how to design higher level so-called automation protocols that put in place long-term planning and strategy. In this case, it was in order to prevail in a game where two teams would face off against each other and try to pop the other side's balloon. We discussed examining different control techniques against one another and seeing which ones were the best for gameplay. And we found that this was a bit difficult to implement as an experiment, but we could take that concept of playing different control strategies against one another and instead use that as an exam for a course. Many aspects of the game weren't visible to the naked eye. You couldn't tell, for example, that many of the drones had shields on the front that they could use to push against the other drones, and you couldn't tell that there were certain zones that were uh, off limits. You couldn't fly in those areas. To appreciate the game as it was playing, we allowed people to look through what we called a virtual reality portal, and it was a, a computer who had, that had a sense of its orientation in space. Some of the concepts in robotics are they're really hard and you have to test things before you really put them on a robot. And that's why we developed this simulation platform to enable the students to develop their code without having to worry too much about the collision aspect of it, and they could um, design their own strategies for playing the games. Things run wonderful in a simulation. They look wonderful, they, they act exactly like, or hopefully they act exactly like you would, you would think they would, but as soon as you put it on something real, you start bringing in all these physical limitations that maybe you didn't account for in your simulator. Being able to see some of those issues that arise when you want to take an idea and put it on a, a physical um, system, um, it, it was, it's wonderful. It's wonderful for giving uh, the students an idea about how there are, are ways and methods to work through these problems and uh, yeah I think that's the primary benefit over you know I guess what you would call traditional testing. To see that thought process from beginning to end and seeing how things will change along the way, adjustments you have to make along the way, that's what it is in reality. You know you, you'll do some of your work individually and then that fits into some bigger picture that the team has to tackle. And so getting that full experience just wrapped up in this one course and something that I was interested in is just amazing. I went with my hat in hand to the Cockrell School and asked Dean Woods if she would give us some funding in educational development for the course, and she did. And then Sandia National Laboratories, and in fact, a local couple here in Austin, philanthropists, Brian and Terry Moroff, they also contributed so between all of this, we had plenty of funding to build eight different quads, to have 40 hours of TA support, and to erect the arena that we did the final exam in, the tournament. It, it couldn't have been, it wasn't possible without uh, that kind of financial support.